Rhinoceros are some of the most endangered species in the world. They're poached for their horns, which have been used primarily in Asian countries as a traditional medicine and status symbol. Demand for rhino horns has been growing. Last year, over 1,200 rhinos were poached, which is roughly one every eight hours. It's believed the entire rhino species could be extinct within five to 10 years. George Bonacy and Matthew Marcus, co-founders of Pembian, believe they can save the rhino with their 3D printed horns. This is a 3D printed rhinoceros horn that would be virtually identical to a exactly. real rhino horn? Exactly. Their horns go for $60,000 a kilogram. So this is more expensive than cocaine? Exactly, yes. So how do you actually 3D print a rhino horn? So our goal was to first start with a powder that was identical to the real thing, and we combined inorganics, metals, minerals, as well as other proteins. And we also incorporated real rhino DNA into it as well. And then from there we were thinking, how can we get this into chunks and then eventually bigger and bigger shapes that will resemble a real rhino horn. And we ended up kind of designing our own 3D printer, using our powder to really build up a, an actual horn. So are you saying that your 3D printed horn is virtually the same as a real horn in shape, size, structure? Yes, yes. I took it to a lab and had them test it, it would come back as rhino horn. Or you did a DNA test, it would come back as, as from a rhino. So we started off with a powder, and this is how it's typically consumed. They'll grind the horn down and, and consume it. So this was our first 3D printed prototype that resembles kind of like a highly oxidized rhino horn. And then this is a more uh, recent prototype where we're trying to get bigger and bigger, ultimately to the full size, like two and a half foot rhino horns. And how do you guys plan to get this onto the market? Uh, so we're planning on going through partnerships with existing companies, both supplement companies, cosmetics companies. A lot of the poachers in Africa that are doing the killing, they're doing it because uh, they're very poor and killing one rhino would feed your family for, for years potentially. So one idea we've had would be giving it to them or selling it to them at a large discount so they can then sell it through the black market channels. They still make a living for their family. The end user still gets it. It's pure, but the rhinos get to survive. There are those critics out there who have said that this might actually do more harm than good. It's a noble idea, but it might actually uh, legitimize this idea that it is an um, actual medicine or increase demand for it. If we can basically fill the supply with an identical product at a cheaper price, it's going to decrease the price for the product, and therefore there's going to be less incentive to poach. Why would you risk your life and go and kill a rhino and make a species extinct when you can go buy from a store for one-tenth the price? Just going over to, to Vietnam and telling people to stop doing it, that alone is not going to help. You also need an alternative. It would be like if someone came to the United States and said, Cutting down Christmas trees at Christmas time is, is stupid, like there's no purpose. Rhino horn is really just a traditional thing you do. It's pretty incredible that this technology can allow you to do this. This probably would not have been possible five, ten years ago. How much of a game changer do you think this will be? Uh, well, I hope and I, I believe that it will save the species. That's, that's the reason why we're doing it. I think now is probably the time to give it a try no matter what. And um, really, it's, it, it might be their only hope. Be sure to watch this next episode of Seeker Stories. There are some people who say that what you're suffering from is not a condition, it's an affliction, it's in your head. How does that make you feel? 